Real friends, imaginary friends, all the ships at sea and in space, and YouTube community. Stereo Steve here, the artist formerly known as Stereo Steve. And I'm doing a little uh, VC vid, and uh, this is a response to Nick Rudo's contest about uh, cover songs better than the originals. And... Uh, I'm going to talk about a few songs. Um, I'm not necessarily going to claim their superiority to the original versions because sometimes the original version is special and you don't want to mess with it. But uh, I'm going to talk about, I think, six or seven songs and a couple of different scenarios where, uh, you know, where the, where the cover song kind of either took on a life of its own or was just a really interesting interpretation. So I'm going to start out with 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 just the no-brainer and uh, on Bob Dylan's post-motorcycle accident John Wesley Harding album. And there's a little song on here, a three stanza poem called All Along the Watchtower which caught the attention of Mr. James Hendrix and he distilled intensity out of the song that caught the world's attention and it's been in every movie ever made about the 60s since then. The Zombies, great band, she's not and when I was a kid listening to the radio, what I heard all the time was Santana's version. This is the promo 12 inch single that was sent to radio stations. The song appears on this uh, double album, Moonflower, which. Uh, part live, part studio, double album. That was that was kind of a thing for a while. In the early 2000s, I saw the Zombies play kind of a reunion show thing. And uh, when they did She's Not There, they added the, the jam section, which was unique to the Santana version. So it kind of came full circle. Okay. The next one... Um, again, I am really happy that the original version of this song is getting more attention than it did in its day. This is Shuggy Otis, the album Freedom Flight. There's a tune on here called Strawberry Letter 23. And what used to be all over the radio was the Brothers Johnson's version. It's just amazing. Produced by Quincy Jones. The production's brilliant. The playing's brilliant. The singing is smooth. It's just a, it's just a perfect song. This album is good. Get this. It's cheap. It's easy to find. Okay, another one. This is another uh, singer-songwriter whose tunes have been covered and interpreted by others a bunch. Laura Nero. This is, this is the reissue of her first album on Columbia. The original was on Verve with a different cover. But there's a song on here called And When I Die. Really great poetic lyrics. Kind of philosophical thoughts about the afterworld, whether or not there's an afterworld, etc., etc. Blood, Sweat, and Tears version. That's the version that was a hit. And uh, they really did a good job of interpreting, interpreting that song. So I give it to them. 
So yeah, that's the first category, like where the cover, where the cover version of the song was the hit, and for good reason. Editing Steve here. I forgot to say, don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment. And also, I've got some really interesting future videos cooking in my skull. So do subscribe and stay tuned because you might dig them. The song everybody loves to hate, Hotel California by the Eagles. You know, one time I was in a restaurant and they had a, a, a light rock station on and they played a version of Hotel California with the guitar solo at the end cut out because it was an easy listening station which is kind of like pornography with the you know what edited out and just the pizza delivery but anyway there is a little band called the Moog Cookbook ye old space band the Moog Cookbook plays the classic rock hits. And uh, they do a bunch of stuff. You know, Ziggy Stardust, Whole Lot of Love, Ain't Talking About Love, More Than a Feeling. But near the end of the album, they do this epic version of Hotel California, where every verse is in a different style of electronic music. And it's just epic and insane and yeah sure it's better than the eagles the beatles tomorrow never knows off the revolver album um i want to talk about the Jazz version by Steve Marcus, sax player, and it's 12 minutes long, and he just turns it into the improvisational freakout that the song is really meant to be. 12 minutes long, great piano solo, great guitar solo, I think, from Larry Coriel. There's another song on this album called Half a Heart, which I want to I want to mention because uh, Half a Heart is uh, where the saxophone part for Jerry Rafferty's Baker Street. Anyway, this is a good album on Vortex Records. Last but definitely not least, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, Guinevere, cover song done by Miles Davis on his album Circle in the Round, and it's like a 18 minute long slow dirge on Guinevere. And, you know, the original is awesome, but he just extracts a darkness from the song with this slow, dirgy, 18-minute long version that just hits the spot. All right, so that's my little talk, my little TED talk about cover songs. Thank you for watching, and... Uh, Peace.